Hey, thanks for joining me today on Just Cook with Michael. After watching this video, you will know how to cook chicken with a Madeira wine sauce. We're gonna saute some chicken breasts. I also enrich the stock with gelatin. When you make your own stock, you're, you're extracting a lot of pure gelatin from the bones of either the beef or chicken, whatever you use. And that is what adds quite a bit of richness to a stock, and that's why it's a beautiful thing on its own. And when you make a really good stock, one of the key signs is when you refrigerate it, it sets up really solid, like a really firm jello. A lot of these store-bought stocks, the flavor is good, but you usually don't get that same good gelatin extraction that happens when you make a stock. So kind of a cheat method, if you're not using your own stock, is to put a little gelatin, plain gelatin, this is unflavored gelatin, in with your stock, and that'll add to the richness so obviously the key thing to a Madeira wine sauce is Madeira wine. It is a wine traditional to the island of Madeira. It has a, a rich history. It was actually toasted at the Declaration of Independence. Basically, the reason for that is it had a special designation because a king from England married a Portuguese princess. So Madeira wine was not taxed in the beginning. Madeira wine had an exemption, so that led to its popularity. But then also what happened just a little bit after the Boston Tea Party, they started taxing Madeira wine again. Of course that, you know, if you get upset over tea, you're gonna be pretty upset if they're taxing your wine. And the colonists were very upset about that. So toasting with Madeira wine during the Declaration of Independence was to symbolize freedom from England that the colonists were seeking. I always like seasoning my protein ahead of time. It allows the salt to penetrate the protein. I'm going to put three quarters of a cup in the pot to heat up. And then about a quarter of a cup of the stock I'm going to put in a bowl. Next I'm going to take the plain gelatin, put it in the quarter cup of cold stock. So I'm just going to let the gelatin bloom for about one minute. You can see it almost turns into it almost looks like jelly. This step of adding gelatin is optional, but it really does add a lot of richness if you're not making your own stock from home. Okay, so that's been blooming for about a minute. Now I'll get. Now I'm just going to get some of the hot liquid, put it in this bowl, kind of temper it in there. So I, I've made a lot of stocks when I worked in hotels, and uh, just just has that same look, that same sheen. You get like a nice shine from really good stocks. So now I'll incorporate this back into the three quarters cup of stock, and that's about it. Let that you know, maybe go for another minute, but that's it. So it's a great cheap method if you don't want to go through the trouble of making your own stock at home. So I'll turn off that flame and I'll set this aside. Now I'm heating up my pan to caramelize the onions. I'm going to use a really hot pan because in order to caramelize something, the natural sugars in the onion, it needs to, the onion needs to get above 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So a really hot pan is what you need. And that's why it's a good idea to use something like cast iron. I have a carbon steel pan here that you could get really hot. This pan is at 324 degrees Fahrenheit. I put water on there, you see how it starts to sizzle right away? That's a sign of a hot pan. Really, I'm hoping to get the pan closer to about 400, so I'm gonna give it another minute. Obviously, you don't need to use an infrared digital thermometer, but I got this just for demonstration purposes mainly, so people understand like what temperatures a pan should be at. So right now, I'm putting water on my hands, sprinkle it, see how it just disappears right away? That's what you want. Now I'm gonna put in about a tablespoon. You either could use pure olive oil or corn oil, some kind of vegetable oil. And I will make sure my fire's on high. So right away you hear that sizzle. That's what you want a lot of times in your sauce tank. Okay, my onions have been going for about five minutes. This is a really hot pan and they're about halfway there, I would say. They're definitely at that wilted stage. And they're, you know, they're starting to caramelize, but I want them to get more caramelized. Just adds such a rich flavor to the dish. Now in this pan, I'm gonna start sauteing the mushrooms over high heat. I like doing it in separate pans because most home range tops don't have enough BTUs or power in order to uh, just caramelize things the way you really should caramelize them. And so mushrooms, in order to get them just tasting really good and, and brown, they need to go through what they call the Maillard reaction. And that reaction needs to take place above 280 degrees Fahrenheit. If you overcrowd a pan, 
it creates a lot of steam because it's not the pan's not that hot. And when you have steam, the highest temperature is is 212. So it's very important when you want to, you know, sear steaks, caramelized onions, brown mushrooms, not to overcrowd the pan. You could use pure olive oil or corn oil. I don't salt my mushrooms right away because again, that draws out too much water at the beginning and it'll cause steam instead of sauteing. So I have my pan on high. So these mushrooms have been going for about five minutes. You can see there's no water on my in the bottom of my pan there. This pan is nice and hot. You don't want the pooling of water because then again, you're braising your mushrooms or steaming your mushrooms, but you're not sauteing your mushrooms. So that's kind of an, an important sign to look at that if you see a bunch of water in your pan, it could mean you're not sauteing it hot enough or you're overcrowding your pan or maybe you, you salted them too soon. That is turning a little brown there. That's kind of what you want. That's the Maillard reaction. The protein in the mushrooms is causing the browning. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. My onions are nice and caramelized. You can see my mushrooms, still no water's coming out of them. Look how nice and brown those are. That brings out so much more flavor than just sauteing them at a low temperature. So now I'll salt and pepper my mushrooms and my onions. I'll deglaze this mushroom pan with a little Madeira wine. Turn off my fire. And what that deglazing does is all those delicious little caramelized pieces of mushroom that get stuck to the pan, it basically lifts those off the pan. So already that would just be like delicious if you took a spoonful of it. Now I have my onions, a one cup of Madeira wine. Look how dark that Madeira wine is. A lot of times that's oxidation, but it just adds so much nuttiness. That's what's one of the beauties of Madeira wine. I'm using fresh thyme and bay leaf, and I'll just put that in there. I'm gonna take those out, you know, probably in about 10 minutes. So you wanna reduce the Madeira wine by about half. So this is just onions, the Madeira wine, the herbs, a little salt, a little pepper. And now this will reduce, I would say about five minutes. You wanna reduce it from about a cup to about a half a cup. A lot of that is just boiling off the alcohol. It already smells so good. Yeah, that's incredible. There's a few steps to this dish, you know, using separate pans, but trust me, all these little things, like everything in life, it's the little things that matter. All these little extra steps of making sure your mushrooms are getting nice and brown, your onions are getting nice and brown, reducing the sauce. Those just add to tremendous flavor to a dish. Now I have my pan going for my chicken. Oil in there. Okay, my Madeira wine and onions have reduced by half. I'm gonna pour this into the mushroom pan. Doesn't matter which, you could go mushrooms into onions or onions into mushrooms. This pan just seems like it'll hold everything better. And now we have our half cup of stock that has the gelatin in it. It's always important to taste. I'm tasting for saltiness probably primarily, then pepper, then after acidity and sweetness. That's good. Now I'll put in my, my tomatoes, my cherry tomatoes. You can use any kind of tomato. It's just summertime here and my tomato plants are going crazy. Don't want to waste them. <laughs> They'll be delicious in this dish. So here you go. Okay, now I'm making a little bit of roux to thicken up the sauce. So I'll put two tablespoons of butter. And you can see here, if I look at this sauce, it's fairly, I mean, the color is beautiful, but it's fairly watery, you know, the consistency of water. The roux will thicken that up to us more sauce-like consistency. Roux is incredibly simple. It's just equal parts butter and flour. So I put two tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna put about two tablespoons of flour. You mix that together and that is a roux. That is it. Very versatile thickening agent. Uh, the reason you do this is because if you just dump flour into, this, into the sauce or any soup, anything like that, the flour would clump up right away. The fat and the butter surrounds every little grain of starch in the flour. So when you put it in your sauce, it disperses evenly and gives you a very even smooth sauce. You know, usually you cook it for about five to 10 minutes and it could be used hot, like I'm gonna use it hot right now. You could you keep some of this in your refrigerator or freezer. It could be used cold because as soon as you put it in hot liquid, the butter part of it's gonna melt and it disperses evenly. So 
very versatile and it's great to have in your repertoire of thickening agents because it's so easy to use. I'll mix this right into my sauce. And it probably takes about five minutes to get the full thickening effect. Just to give you an idea, like, you know, that was like water before. You can see now it's more of the, this is just after not even a minute. It's kind of the consistency, maybe half the consistency of like syrup. I take out my bay leaf because again, bay leaf does not break down. Now I will finish with a little bit of cream. Again, it is optional, but it adds a lot of richness to the dish. I have a little bit of my fresh parsley to finish with, and I'll do my final tasting. Wow, that's good. Madeira wine is so versatile. Keep it around. Even if you don't want to make this full dish, just always remember if you're sauteing a piece of chicken or beef or pork, just at the end, deglaze with about, for each person, about two tablespoons of Madeira wine. So deglaze, scrape the pan to bring up all those delicious pieces of caramelized food that you just sauteed. And then after finish with a little whole butter, maybe for each person about a tablespoon of whole butter. And that alone, just the deglazing and the richness of the Madeira wine with the butter, that's, a, that's what they call a pan sauce and they're really easy to do. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you wanna check out more of my Portuguese videos, check out my website, justcookwithmichael.com. Check that out, thanks for joining me. Now go cook for someone you love.